Welcome back to Citizens Forum. This is being filmed on Wednesday, September the 18th. Uh, we're going to be talking about a remarkable issue in this segment, and our guest is Ray Zimmerman, who's been involved in land use issues for probably longer than you'd care to remember. Yeah, <laughs> some of it I remember. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be talking about something that I don't think I ever heard about until a couple of days ago, which is the Juan de Fuca Forest. So we have an opportunity, and what is the opportunity presented by this forest, and what is the forest? Um, I'll give you the opportunity first. Okay. And that is, uh, so many people are, are really frustrated and flustered about the larger issues of our time. And certainly, climate change, uh, environmental destruction is one of them. And uh, they're remote, and we don't seem to be able to do anything about it. I mean, you can change your personal habits, but on a collective basis, not much is happening from the governments, and uh, whether it's local or provincial or federal. But in this case, the decisions we make about these lands will determine how much waste, energy is wasted, how much uh, ecological destruction there is, and it's the one to in the Juan de Fuca Forest. The Juan de Fuca Forest, just to give you a quick description, is uh, 130,000 hectares between uh, Souk, <coughs> excuse me, and Port Renfrew. The, uh, so I hope we're re referencing that map and uh, to, so that people can get a sense of how big it is. Uh, it, there are 150 people live in that area. It's twice as large as the remaining capital regional district. So now you didn't mention, but you told me that this forest area is actually in our CRD. It's in the Capital Regional District, yeah. And it's uh, two-thirds of the Capital Regional District on Vancouver Island. The uh, Gulf Islands, is, the, the Islands Trust in the South Gulf Islands, is also the Capital Regional District, but I'm just talking about the area on Vancouver Island. So it goes all the way out to Port Renfrew and all from Schwartz Bay down here and then to Port Renfrew. And you showed me a couple of pictures and talked about it a little bit and it's it's like I don't know what you call a world-class area I don't want to say that but it's it's an amazing treasure maybe that's the best thing to say about it well it's it what's unique about the area really is the extent to which we that is the people in the municipalities and through the Capital Regional District Board are responsible for the kinds of activities that go, in, go on there. Uh, as far as logging goes, that's a provincial issue, but everything else, and especially settlement. And the big thing as far as climate issues go, and being conservative in energy and material use, is to keep human settlements compact. That is the primary tenant of the Capital Regional District, the first one in the regional growth strategy. Number one, keep human settlements compact. That's our responsibility. All the communities have signed on to it. And if we do that, then we have a forested area from Souk to Port Renfrew, which is what is necessary to ameliorate climate change. So uh, that, th that's the opportunity in that area. Um, you also mentioned the refuge for flora and fauna that exists there. Uh, Part of the uh, Juan de Fuca Forest is the, uh, the water district lands, and uh, that's about 20,000 hectares. The Juan de Fuca area is uh, 130,000 hectares, so a percentage of it is, is water district lands. And in, uh, for example, in 1990, the Greater Victoria Water District was clear-cutting our drinking watershed, which is the Souk and the Goldstream watersheds. Uh, some of the clear-cuts were equal to um, a square kilometer in size, so one kilometer by one kilometer, huge. And uh, the, the attitude of the water district at the time was that, uh, well, we're making a few bucks logging our water district so that you have cheaper water rates. So just, just to emphasize this, our water district run by our city councillors and staff mm -hmm. was clear-cut logging mm -hmm. the area, the valley around Souk Lake, which mm -hmm. is where we get our drinking water. Exactly. And the, the, the little aside is, they weren't really keeping track of how much or whether or not even the logging was influencing water quality. They were just primarily concerned about making a buck. 
in, in fact, some years they were losing money logging in, in the down years. So uh, people uh, got quite um, upset after the, uh, the algae bloom in at the end of the 1980s. And so uh, that examination of what was going on in the water district led in 1994 to a group of citizens plus Western Canada Wilderness Committee and the Sierra Club taking the water district to court and the BC Supreme Court uh, uh, ruled that the logging operation was illegal. So the logging operation stopped. The beauty about uh, that area is it's the largest remaining uh, intact area of, uh, well, chunks of the, the Coastal Douglas for Moist Maritime Biogeoclimatic Zone is in the water district. So the logging of the old growth stopped and the, some old growth still remains in there, which is unique. And uh, then uh, around 2000, uh, maybe a little earlier, the, uh, water, well, it, the water district changed from the Greater Victoria Water District to CRD Water. CRD Water bought the Leech River Watershed, which is, it's, it's a bit of a long story, but it's one of the worst clear cuts in southern Vancouver Island that they paid about $60 million for. A bit too much in my opinion. But um, so we have two protected watersheds now, 20,000 hectares. And uh, in turn, it's, and the, the, the most magnificent part about it really is it's an, a natural area from which humans are excluded. So human activities, other than the maintenance of the roads and so on for water purposes, is the only thing that goes in, in, on in the water district. And it's become a huge refuge for all the big mammals that used to exist here. Wolf, cougar, elk, bear, they're, they're all existing in that area. And that water district lands are contiguous with the um, C to C green blue belt. So it's about 30,000 hectares altogether that's contiguous. And it's uh, one of the largest protected areas on southern Vancouver Island, which really exists now as a result of public action in the early 90s. Yeah, yeah people, people did a great thing. Um, and I think you're saying that in order to do the same thing in the Juan de Fuca forest area, people are going to have to come together. Well, it's a little different Juan de Fuca forest area. Uh, th there's no chance of acquiring those lands. It's too large. It's too expensive. Uh, uh, what the, the attempt is to bring, first of all, bring it, let people know how large this area is. There's nobody there, 150 people. It's just, it's phenomenal. But it is um, an area, for, it's been logged, much second growth, um, silviculture and, uh, and agriculture can occur in that area. So um, the, the biggest influence that we will have on that area through our local governments is to keep settlements out. No sprawl in the Juan de Fuca forest. That's, that's what we can accomplish. And if we accomplish that, that'll be magnificent. Um, the, it's been decided to concentrate uh, the urban growth in the, the urban, growth, um, urban growth areas. Uh, what are they called? RUXPA, Regional Urban Containment Policy Areas. Okay. So, <laughs> but, um, so that's, that's another tenant of the regional growth strategy. So it, once again, it's, it's an area of tremendous, it should be of tremendous local interest and concern, but nobody really seems to know much about it. And things are happening. You mentioned uh, some speculation taking place now. Well, the, the most recent uh, event, uh, well, this, there's quite a few. Um, I, I should mention that in, uh, in 2006, there was uh, the uh, Malahat uh, Highway uh, Expansion Study by Stantec. There was uh, and, and a proposal in the CRD board to bring water to the boundaries of the Western Forest Products lands. And uh, uh, so these are, these are major, uh, highway expansion, bring water to the area, uh, you know, these are major issues in 2006. And then in January 2007, the government allowed Western Forest Products to take 12,500 hectares out of the tree farm license, which were their private lands. That was so huge. So we have a huge, a large change in land use by allowing those 
lands to be taken out of the tree farm license and they can put them on the real estate market, which they shortly did in a small, small piece of it. Yeah. And so th something was in the works, you know? So that, that was uh, what was coming up um, in, in 2006. And it, those changes were an indication that uh, it's time to pay a little more attention to, to what's going on out there. In terms of, uh, and then Enders Ilke bought some of the waters, water district land, or the water, just, sorry, the um, Western Forest Products lands and uh, attempted to have that development, the Marine Trails development, which was 265 hectares and 265 buildings spread out over 60, about six, seven kilometers, I think it was. So it was the introduction of urban sprawl into the Juan de Fuca Forest. But the public objection was immense. Hardly anybody spoke for it and that proposal did not go through. Right, so, uh, I mean, it, it's an area where, you know, we can go either way, and I guess we have to, well, the, we have the, to think it through and, and at least know about it, which, which we don't. No, and half, approximately half of the area is owned by large corporations. So the, the forest corporations, first of all, Western Forest Park sold their lands, but Timber West owns some land out there, I think, and uh, these large uh, forest corporations bought these lands for speculative purposes. They've had a break in taxes because they were under the Forest uh, Act. Yeah. They've, had, uh, they've been given some of the most magnificent forest on earth to log, and they've turned it into a second growth industrial forest. And uh, so the tax break, and with that right to log, they had access to as much, as much capital as they wanted to develop the area. And they just kept those lands because they were close to the urban area. And I mean, it's, it's highly speculative for them to keep those areas for that length of time because yeah. they were hoping that in the future, urban sprawl will get out that far. Now, the way things are going, who knows what will ever happen out there, you know. It's, uh... Well, hopefully, uh, will uh, the attention brought to the Juan de Fuca Forest and the agreement amongst all the communities that urban sprawl will be limited um, will uh, we'll keep the uh, development proposals out of that forested area. Yeah. It'll, be con it'll continue to be logged, but no, no human settlements in the area. You wanted to talk about the, the First Nations role in all of this. Well, um, I, I, right off the top, we should have, uh, uh, or anyway, we'll do it now, but uh, I think uh, many people are not familiar with the uh, Douglas Treaties. And I would just like to read a couple of sentences out of the Souk Douglas Treaty. And it, it's not very long, but it gives you an indication of the kind of mindset that uh, existed when these treaties were created. Uh, this is the Souk tribe, it says, northwest of Souk Inlet. Uh, know all men, uh, we who have signed our names uh, to this deed on the 1st of May, 1850, do consent to surrender entirely and forever to James Douglas, the agent of the Hudson's Bay Company uh, and uh, agent of and, and, and deputy governor, governor and deputy governor, we consent that the whole of the land situated between Souk and uh, Sheringham to the interior mountains, snow-covered mountains of the island um, will be surrendered forever to the white man. For that, we have uh, received payment of 48 pounds, six shillings and eight pence, uh, with one proviso uh, that uh, we are allowed to hunt and fish in those lands in perpetuity. If we look at the First Nations land, and the map is, uh, it's, it's titled First Nations land, and I think that's a misnomer um, because the, the reserves are the, the darker areas on the map. And if, if we look at the reserves, the, 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 the whole area was First Nations area. If we look at the small reserves, all the decisions outside of the reserves are being made by the local governments, the provincial government, or, or the federal governments. So virtually, the First Nations are virtually excluded from the decision-making process on all of their lands. And I mean, it's, it's shameful, it's outrageous. That was I an amazing deal that uh that the Hudson Bay Company struck. Yeah, eight, uh, 48 pounds and a few. For so, everything. 
uh, the, it's, it's no longer acceptable that this continue and the First Nations, how that's going to happen, uh, no one really, uh, it hasn't been figured out, but certainly something has to be done so that the First Nations have say about their traditional lands. So uh, in, when, whenever we talk about, uh, you know, where settlements go and so on, because it is incumbent on us to make sure that human settlements are, you know, tight and uh, not spread out all over the place. So that, it is a responsibility we have. Uh, but in we, when we talk about human settlements, we're, we're talking about First Nations land. Where's the First Nations input? We're, it's, it's just not there. Uh, and uh, yeah. that, that has to be changed. Um, yeah, you, you touch upon a lot of so important issues that just carry on, but never really get made better. Certainly, uh, the First Nation is issue has not been dealt with. But uh, I think it's really quite important uh, that people uh, recognize what's been, what's been done here in the past because people organized, like the, the protection of the C2C Green Blue Belt, is as a, it took 10 years to do that. The, uh, the campaign to stop the logging in the Water District took five years. As a result of that, we have a contiguous area now that's protected and some of the some of the best old old growth left here is in that area also uh, completely protected small watersheds there isn't one protected watershed on the east side of vancouver island from victoria all the way to the north end of the island not one we have uh, several small ones in our area so that's been accomplished through those through that campaign the area is a treasure and it, and it's we fantastic. have to be involved in whatever happens going forward. Mm -hmm. So I think you're hoping that such a movement will get created. Usually, oh, quite often, for example, with the Enders OK uh, Marine uh, Trails proposal, uh, when that happened, people were outraged. What? You know, uh, seven kilometers of sprawl for, on 265 hectares? And the hectares were, you know, the, they were clumps here and there. So, and right along the Juan de Fuca Marine Trail. So the, the public gets engaged and involved when there's an opponent or, or something's going to happen which they are not supportive of. In this and case, these lands are just sitting there yeah. and nothing's yet happening. So we have to get organized about them before events occur. Keep it in mind, the Juan de Fuca Forest. Thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum and thank you very much, Ray. You're welcome. <laughs>